Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Diana Serra, measurement consultant with WHO's Department of Maternal, Newborn, Child, and Adolescent and Aging, based in, uh, in Geneva. I'd like to thank you very much for joining this first series of webinars on strengthening uh, MNH quality of care measurements. Today, we'll be hearing from esteemed speakers from Sierra Leone and Uganda, who will share the experience on this subject. This webinar is hosted by the Network for Improving Quality of Care for Maternal, Newborn and Child Health, which is a broad partnership of committed governments, implementing agencies and partner agencies working to ensure that every woman, newborn, child and adolescent health, adolescent receives quality health services throughout their life cycle and level of care continuum. There are 11 countries that are part of the Quality of Care Network and uh, quality of care measurement is one of the key priorities of the uh, Quality of Care Network as and it is implemented through the key strategic objectives of action, learning and accountability. For more information uh, on the Quality of Care Network activities, please do visit our website. Uh, before I turn it over to our presenters uh, for their presentations, I would like to briefly highlight the importance of MNH quality of care measurement and explain why it's one of the key priorities of the quality of care network. Many of you may have already heard of the phrase, uh, data is a new oil. This is true given the uh, today's unprecedented demand for data for decision making across all sectors, including MNH quality of care. So in essence, uh, successful measurement is the cornerstone for successful improvement. We shall only be able to know if we're improve, improved or not if we have a solid quality of care mach measurement mach machinery in place, which generates actionable quality of care data. This is also key to building a, uh, a health care system that uses data to learn and to continuously improve the quality of care that it delivers. The WHO's quality of care measurement framework is based on the quality of care standards that were released, uh, the maternal health standards, the newborn standards, and the sick and, uh, small, uh, and the uh, pediatric care standards. So, so far we have uh, the three sets of standards. And secondly, the WHO measurement framework uh, is uh, one of the key domains of, this, of the standards is uh, actionable health information systems, which is uh, which speaks to um, quality of care measurements. The uh, WHO's maternal neonatal and health quality of care measurement framework is also modeled on the Donabidian quality of care framework. So the objectives of today's MNH quality of care web, uh, measurement webinar series is to discuss progress, learnings, challenges experienced by ministries of health in improving the capabilities of health information systems and overall monitoring and evaluation to improve MN MNCH quality of care and also address emerging health challenges. So specifically, we are going to hear from the two presenters on what works, uh, how and why it works. We'll also hear whether there's been any innovative approaches that the, uh, the countries have implemented to strengthen MNH quality of care. They will also help answer why, what we can do differently and how we can replicate, scale up and sustain policies and practices that work. The webinar will be in two part series. Uh, the first part will uh, we'll hear from our esteemed presenter from presenters from Sierra Leone. And the second part we'll hear from our esteemed presenter from Uganda. From Sierra Leone, we'll hear from uh, Matron Margaret Mana, the program manager, National uh, Quality Management Unit, the Ministry of Health and Sanitation, Sierra Leone. And we'll also hear to, from uh, Ibrahim Kamara, the monitoring and evaluation officer from um, Ministry of Health and Sanitation, Sierra Leone. And then in the second part, we'll, we, uh, uh, Rogers Kajimu, the Monitoring and Evaluation Officer from the Ministry of Health, Uganda, will take us through the presentation. And then right after that, we'll have a session on quality, uh, on, on questions and answers. So with that, I will now turn it over to our first presenter, uh, Mitron Margaret. Mana, you're welcome to take us through the first part of the presentation. Thank you. Over to you, Mitron Margaret. Thank you very much, Diane, for that wonderful in, in introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. Of course, um, this is going to be the outline of my presentation this morning. Next slide, please. So as you can see by background from Sierra Leone, 
uh, I have given you two maps, the one that is giving you the regions and the one that is giving you the districts. As you can see, Sierra Leone has a population of around 8 million people. We have very beautiful beaches and hills, very nice country. But uh, you'll see why we have been classified as one of the least developed countries. Next slide, please. So um, giving you an overview of our health delivery system, we have a health care status from community as far as tertiary level. So you can see we have the tertiary level facilities, we have the secondary and the community level where you have the community health workers, the MCH. Next slide, please. So I'm also giving you uh, the distribution of our facilities based by, by districts and regions. So as you can see, we have uh, more uh, health facilities at community level and also the hospitals. Then I have given you an insight about how the private facilities look like, including the private hospitals and a total number on this slide. Next slide, please. So uh, based on the number of facilities we have, this is the human resource profile. If you look at the pyramid, we have a very uh, broad middle. If you turn the pyramid up, where you have the lower cadres. So Sierra Leone as a country have more lower cadre in terms of human resource. But when you, the pyramid is going up, it is very skewed in terms of doctors, midwives, uh, laboratory technicians, as well as pharmacists. So our profile, human resource profile, we have more auxiliary or lower cadre staff compared to specialist cadre. Next slide, please. So this has actually helped for Sierra Leone not to meet the global standards or benchmark for human resource. So this is our impact interventions, how much they have been able to influence. If you look at this slide, our ANC coverage for both ANC one and four, we are doing very well. And we have at least 83% of our women delivering at health uh, institutions. Then we have skilled bath attendants that is higher as compared to the number of, of, of outcome indicators that we have. Next slide, please. So this is our impact intervention. If you see the previous slide, our process indicators are very good but our outcome intervention or impact intervention, we have not been able to do well. We still have a high maternal mortality of 717 per 100,000 live births. And we also have still bat of 24% per 1,000 births, including our infant mortality and child mortality and newborn mortality. So this actually we have not been able to do well as compared to our process indicators. Next slide, please. So based on these figures that I have given you, the process indicators are well, but the outcome or impact in the indicators, we are not doing well. So quality of care has been a major contributing factor to our the current status of what the country is going on. Because of that, the country has prioritized quality of care. So they develop a business case, which is the RMNCAH strategy, where quality of care was strategic objective two. This country wants to focus on quality of care so that we are able to at least intervene on our outcome indicators. Next slide, please. Um, in that vein, we had to like develop our QOC roadmap that has got four goals that are in line with the quality, equity, and dignity network outcome uh, strategic outputs, the LALA framework. So we developed the QOC roadmap where we have varied initiatives starting from community level to secondary level and also the tertiary level facilities. Next slide, please. So if you look at the LALA framework, we have been able in terms of governance to set up governance structures these are our QI teams that are operating in six hospitals because we have identified some of the facilities as learning site. So these are some of the meetings and some of the activities that are going on in all the, the, the hospitals 
and they go down to some selected primary healthcare facilities that we call PHUs. Next slide, Dan. So we developed, these are the global common core indicators, and we try to adapt these to suit the Sierra Leone context for the provision of care, as well as the experience of care. Next slide. Next. So those global common core indicators, this is what we did nationally. So we have our national common core indicators that are aligned to the global uh, common core indicators and we develop our framework, an m and &E framework. So basically, if you look the Sierra Leone registers and also our indicator uh, books, this is how much we have been able to do in line. So as you can see, we have our targets and the sources of information and how we collect them regularly. Next slide, please. Okay, so the common core indicators for the national level is still continuing for both. So quality care matrix, actually, this is the landscape that is giving you how we have been able to collect. Next slide, please. So at this point, I will now call upon my colleague, the data manager for Sierra Leone, Mr. Ibrahim Kamara, to take us through the slides that are coming. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, um, and good afternoon to everybody. Okay, and um, for this slide, what we intend to do is actually to just present the process that we followed to strengthen the quality of care data. Um, if you see on the first slide, we started the revision of the current HMI system so that we make it to be online with um, the QC in the cases that we have currently that we are monitoring. And also on a regular basis to do conduct and we also have developed an dashboard that we use to Hello, Ibrahim, we're online. having some feedback the having RMNC, trouble hearing the, you. Um, quality of care indicators. And we've also conducted. Um... Hello. Yeah, we're having some trouble uh, hearing Ibrahim. Maybe Biniam, are you? Maybe Biniam, you could uh, take over in the meantime as we uh, wait for Ibrahim to join. Biniam or Matron Margaret. Yes, uh, Diana, uh, I think I can do on behalf of uh, Ibrahim, I think he has uh, network or internet difficulty. Can you hear me all? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you very much. I'm using uh, Margaret's uh, laptop, so uh, I think we can proceed. So uh, uh, thank you all. Uh, as you have seen uh, from Margaret Mana, uh, uh, Manager for Quality, uh, Quality uh, of Care Program, she has outlined you know, how uh, the indicator uh, is set up and how the uh, MND framework is aligned with the QBD network you know, strategic objective, but also you know, uh, how it has contextualized you know, the local needs in terms of monitoring you know, uh, quality of care initiatives or performances to uh, reduce you know, uh, maternal and child mortality by 50% you know, uh, in facilities uh, <clears throat> in Sierra Leone. Next slide, please. So uh, to address all this, you know, a number of process has been uh, followed. Uh, the first one was, you know, reviewing, you know, uh, the existing HMI uh, system, as well as, you know, uh, adapting, you know, tools and uh, creating, you know, system for or KPI management, as well as, you know, uh, capacity building of, you know, the worker. 
So uh, in the tool adaptation process, uh, one of the areas that has been looked at was you know, the maternity register. So as you see, uh, this is uh, just an overview of uh, part of uh, the register where we collect you know, uh, some of the indicator for uh, the data that we really monitor on a regular basis. As you, see, as, you see, as you have seen from uh, Maggie's presentation, one of the common point indicator was around you know, delivery, live births, still births, and as well as uh, issues around you know, uh, active management of the state of labor and, uh, and uh, issues of, you know, uh, uh, of uh, you know, breastfeeding immediately uh, after birth, uh, birth. So this is the, royal, the orange uh, uh, highlighted sections are focusing around you know, the common core indicator that we really collect on a regular basis. It also shows you know, the outcome indicator even. We will see maybe in the second slide, uh, please go uh, next slide that uh, is a summary form uh, where we collect you know, uh, some of the indicator. Uh, sorry, we, we have not highlighted on this section. And as you see, uh, maybe in the second table, you will see uh, the outcome indicator or delivery uh, that's really uh, uh, monitored or reported you know, uh, by uh, facilities, including live births and delivery. This is a, a, a summary form for collecting information around obstetric complication as well as outcome of you know, all of the complication admitted or registered you know, uh, in healthcare facilities. You can also see you know, in the last table or in the last row where you see the postpartum uh, family planning counseling as well as you know, those who have been accepted. So these are you know, some of the common core indicator that are really collected you know, through the HMIS form. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, <clears throat> One of one of the QOC agenda is you know provisions of care and uh, and uh, within the donor bidding framework you know we have to also monitor you know the experience of care. So we, our standard follow uh, has both uh, the, the provisions of care and the experience of care standard. Within that we have been uh, thinking you know how to uh, monitor the experience of care uh, uh, indicators uh, that we have developed uh, particularly uh, in healthcare facilities. We have we are using two approaches. One is the exp, the, the exit surveys or the exit uh, interviews, where uh, mothers uh, are discharged from healthcare facilities, uh, as well as you know a caretaker for pediatric uh, children. And we are also working around developing you know committee scorecard, which also look uh, trying to see you know uh, the views of you know communities regarding the care provided in these healthcare facilities. This is a tool we have developed to monitor. Uh, uh, experience of care through exit interviews. Next slide, please. Next slide. Uh, this is the data collection process. Uh, I think it is the same across the board. Uh, I don't need to go in detail. Uh, I feel it is the same, you know, uh, in many of the African countries. So we use, I think most of them use the DHIS system and it's reported, you know, on a regular basis, you know, through from facilities to the district, from the district to the national. I think the same data flow uh, is just to give an insight about it. So next slide, please. Uh, yeah, uh, this is the DHIS2 uh, login detail. Uh, the moment you log in, you know, uh, it gives you, it takes you to uh, a number of uh, management tools. Uh, uh, one of them is a quality of care program dashboard, uh, which we are really keen to discuss today uh, in this particular forum. So uh, once you log in, you know, you can click on quality of care program dashboard and it will take you to the following slide. Please next. Yeah, so uh, when you log, uh, the moment uh, you uh, navigate uh, in the QOC uh, dashboard, you will see uh, uh, the, uh, these uh, indicators dashboard where you see, for instance, uh, completeness of reporting, as well as you know trends in terms of uh, completeness, as well as you know some of the quality of care uh, indicator uh, that you see below, for instance, how the institutional delivery rate looks like, uh, the percentage, and even we have you know uh, the GIS system where it shows you know uh, where we have set a threshold and look at you know which one is performing well uh, uh, and badly. Next slide, please. <clears throat> And uh, yeah, these are also uh, some of the uh, indicators that we uh, monitor. 
for instance, we have the Caesarean section uh, where we look at, you know, by district as well as, you know, at the national level, how it's also evolving in terms of trends across the menses. Uh, and also maternal mortality rate by facility and by district. So this will help, you know, uh, uh, the minister or uh, medical officers or district medical officers, uh, anyone actually involved, you know, in management uh, at the national and district level to look at, you know, how they are really uh, working to uh, advance programs as well as you know ensure life saving uh, programs reach you know the uh, beneficiaries and we are on track in terms of attaining you know our uh, objective of 50% reductions of maternal and child mortality next slide please Yeah, this is the same continuations of uh, of the dashboard. Uh, you also see, you know, some of the remaining indicator. Uh, we have the stillbirths. Uh, we have also, you know, the initiation of breastfeeding. Basically, all the indicator uh, that we are able to capture through the provision of care have been uh, have been uh, migrated, you know, uh, to the uh, to quality of care dashboard the KPI indicator where uh, 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 it can be seen uh, or uh, looked at, you know, by program and directors to give, you know, uh, quick uh, feedback and make decisions uh, on areas requiring, you know, their attentions at various uh, levels. So this is how the dashboard really uh, looks like. Next slide, please. Yes, this is uh, uh, around uh, the data completeness uh, for uh, the score. Uh, you know, uh, we have two platforms. One is a dashboard, and the other one is the RMNC scorecard. This RMNC scorecard has also, you know, some indicator, which also actually overlapping, but, you know, uh, uh, the needs are different at the various levels. So we have also created, you know, the keywords indicator, uh, indicator, some of the keywords indicator to be seen in the scorecard indicator. And this is a scorecard template that you see, uh, uh, and this is a completeness around, uh, uh, around uh, reporting. Next slide, please. I don't think we need to spend here much. But in the next slide, you will see uh, this is a scorecard where it shows, you know, in various in the in the various indicator how each districts are performing with the threshold that we have set for the various indicator. For instance, in the second row, you will see one of the quality of care global common core indicator, which is also a national core, indi core indicator, which is initiation of breastfeeding within the first hour or after birth. And maybe in the second slide, also you will see the other uh, uh, QOC indicator. That are, that are already incorporated into the, day, the, the scorecard. For instance, you see the hospital mortality, child mortality rate, which is one of the national common core uh, uh, indicator for uh, monitoring. Next slide, please. Yes, it's the same thing. And you will see, you know, uh, for instance, in the uh, second row, you will see the institutional delivery rate. Also in the, uh, uh, it, in the, I think in the in, in the fourth row, you will see the cesarean section rate, which are really uh, monitor, uh, can be monitored by you know uh, minister or CMOs or you know various uh, managements. So this is just to show you how the QOC indicator are really incorporated into the KPI management of the national level uh, uh, national level uh, at the national level, where they can look at you know progress of um, of the key priorities identified. This is how the facility is really monitoring in terms of you know, the uh, core indicator. These are around maternal mortality. You will see uh, for since 2019, where it's our baseline, how facilities are performing. This is just to show you that facilities are reporting and uh, we are documenting progress. Uh, it's just, we are still you know, far behind in terms of our achieving 50% you know, reduction. The same is true for the stillbirths, uh, where we have facilities you know, which are, uh, uh, which are really uh, in bad shape, but still, you know, work is on progress, you know, to uh, to uh, change, you know, the narratives. Next slide, please. These are some of the key uh, documentation uh, uh, where key teams, you know, uh, uh, intervene to address, you know, some of the bottlenecks they identified, you know, through their uh, pro audit processes. And this is one of the hospital which is uh, trying to work around anemia screening for reducing maternal mortality. And uh, we see the baseline and, and the progress, you know, they have made so far. The same is true, you know, for uh, uh, PHSHC, which is doing the same thing. This is just to show you how the QY initiatives are really being implemented by the different QY team and how they are also monitoring, you know, their progress in terms of performance to achieve their desired goal. Next slide, please. 
Next slide. Yeah, I think it's coming slow for, uh, yeah. So uh, this is the same uh, KY initiative that's being implemented you know, in, in one of the facilities. So uh, this KY documentation uh, uh, issues, uh, we, have, uh, uh, we are using a parallel system, but now we are working to develop you know, uh, an app, uh, an electronic application where every KY initiative or improvement the plans are incorporated into a system where uh, where uh, where it can be seen instantly by uh, national district and the key teams themselves, and it will also facilitate easy reporting of their progress and also to look at you know uh, the run chart you know in terms of their achievement. Next slide, please. This is uh, uh, this is just to show you, you know, uh, the experience of care service that we did some time ago. Uh, we are now working towards, you know, uh, making it regular, uh, at least to do it twice a year. And the first one, the second one is going to happen, you know, uh, in the coming two weeks. And this is just to show you, you know, how uh, uh, how the experience of care tool is in being employed to measure, you know, some of the core indicator that we have uh, discussed earlier on. Some of the lessons uh, that made it possible, you know, to the uh, achievement of a stronger data system is, you know, we have a strong political commitment. We have a participatory process, you know, for HMIS review process that was uh, led by the PPI. And I thank, you know, here uh, uh, Ibrahim Kamara and his, his director uh, for making this possible. We have also uh, technical competencies, you know, at DPPI MOHS who are able to navigate, you know, into the data system and also able to create, you know, some of the platforms uh, that we have discussed uh, a while ago. And we have also a strong leadership from quality management program. Uh, Margaret Mana, who is a champion for quality, have made it possible, you know, to provide you know, sufficient leadership uh, to, uh, together with, you know, her director, uh, uh, who have also maybe on this call. We have also a strong collaboration between, you know, the various directorates, including quality management program. Uh, we have also, you know, a strong desire for uh, senior management of uh, Ms. Ruffles to have, you know, some KPIs to monitor some of uh, the initiatives that's uh, currently ongoing in the country. Uh, they are really keen to have data and to use data, you know, for decision making. Although uh, uh, in terms of actualization of you know, data use, still it's in progress. We have also a strong partnership, you know, uh, with uh, UN and implementing partner, uh, 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 particularly the WHO have played, you know, a big role in making this a reality. Next, next slide, please. So there are a number of challenges. Uh, I think it may be the same, you know, for everyone, but the unique one is, you know, around, you know, the capacities, particularly at healthcare, uh, lower level healthcare facilities, where we have challenges in terms of, you know, number, competence, as well as, you know, uh, unsalaried uh, healthcare worker. The rest, some of them are linked, you know, with funding and financing, which we are really working, you know, to address, uh, to address this. I think for the benefit of the time, you know, we can go to the next slide around the recommendation or way forward. So uh, having all this challenge, you know, we are trying to release them through, you know, continuous capacity building, uh, particularly by making the agenda uh, for everyone uh, within, the, uh, within the QOC space. We have also a plan, uh, we, have, we have been working, you know, to strengthen the ICT for the HMT and hospitals and advocacy for data use and data driven performance reviews in weekly and monthly as well as quarterly meetings. And we are also working on digitizing some of the key wide documentation template, which will be live maybe in the next two weeks. Mm -hmm. And maybe we'll have another webinar talking about, you know, how this really is working and able to give us, you know, what we need to monitor uh, at the national district and facility level. We have also uh, uh, planned to integrate, you know, DQ, uh, DQ way in regular support supervision, so that you know the DPI team uh, join uh, the regular RMA support supervision, where they can look at also the data discrepancies, you know, at a point of care. We have also a biannual experience of care assessment, which this uh, assessment result will be published in peer reviewed journal, as well as communicated, you know, to the global forum. Uh, <clears throat> I end uh, our presentation with this, and I think on behalf of the ministry. Ministry have we have been asking me to acknowledge you know everyone who have been involved in this process, including WHO headquarter, regional office, and uh, the QD network, you know, uh, stakeholder, particularly you know uh, the agencies. Maybe Margaret will have uh, 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 maybe we may allow her to say uh, one minute to acknowledge you know uh, the, uh, the partners. 
Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Biniam. So at this point, um, on behalf of the ministry and uh, my humble self, I, I really want to say thank you to the QED network, to my partners, both uh, external and in-country, specifically WHO. The network has been able to really capacitate me and also provide, you know, an giving me an opportunity to be able to do this wonderful work in country. Then also my partners in country and my QOC committee members, the Ministry of Health, the support they have given me, my director and the chief medical officer, and also the director of the uh, DPPI, that is uh, the Directorate of Policy Planning and Information, and uh, my colleagues and the QOC officers in all the facilities and all districts. You know, it is their story I am, I am explaining today. So um, thank you very much, Diane. Thank you, Oli, for all this opportunity you guys have provided me. So I am here in Sierra Leone, willing to share experiences. And you know, the QED network has really helped us to showcase that it is possible. It is possible. And if we continue in this trajectory, I am sure we are able to achieve our goal at the end of the day. Thank you very much and bye-bye. Thank you very much, Mitch and Margaret Mana, Biniam Getachew and Ibrahim Kamara for the excellent presentation uh, on the experience of Sierra Leone in strengthening HMIs for MNH quality care. Uh, Biniam Getachew is the medical officer at Child Health, WHO Sierra Leone. Uh, and uh, before, I turn it over to the second presentation, which is from Uganda. I would like to check to see if Ibrahim Kamara, you would like to make uh, you able to re rejoin, and if you have any additional comments you'd like to add to the presentation, please feel free to unmute your mic. And uh... yes, um, thank you very much, Diane. I'm sorry, actually, I lost connection um, in one of the provinces in Australia, so the internet connectivity is a bit poor. But I think I'm okay with what I've been presenting so far. All right, okay, thank you so much. Okay, so we will now hear from uh, the, our next presenter from Uganda, who is uh, Rogers Kajimo, the Monitoring and Evaluation Officer from the Ministry of Health, Uganda. So, Rogers, over to you. Thank you, Diana, for the warm uh, introduction. Once again, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. I want to share Uganda's experience in strengthening the health information and um, information system for maternal and newborn health quality of care measurement. Uh, quickly, I want to give a brief background. Uh, in 2017, the MNH quality of care network was established in Uganda. Uh, it is being chaired by the Ministry of Health, Department of Standard Compliance, and <coughs> Accreditation and patient protection that is come. Uh, also, as a country, we happen to have the national Ramnak strategy, which is uh, currently running. And um, excuse me, Rogers, could you please? Uh, I think there's uh, some noise coming. Is it your phone? Could you please uh, turn it down? Yeah, it was uh, some neighbor next to me here. I've just a bit moved away. So the RAMNAC strategy has two broad objectives. One points to ending the preventable maternal newborn child and adolescent health, and then um, promoting the health and development of all children, ado uh, adolescents and women. So these two broad objectives are in total sync with the MNHOC indicators. Also to note, uh, the country has got uh, the National Quality of Care Framework together with our strategic plan, uh, which is running from 2021 to 2025. So these two strategic documents, uh, the ones that are guiding implementation of um, MNH uh, quality of care interventions in the country. Um, my next slide uh, talks about the learning sites, how they are distributed in the country. In total, there are 18. The, some of the blue shading you see on the map. Uh, we can move on to the next slide there. Uh, this slide talks about the key progress and milestones uh, for Uganda. 
First of all, we've been able to conduct a baseline assessment at all learning sites around eminent quality of care. Uganda has also been able to adopt and develop the essential core MNH uh, indicators. Uh, we've been able to build the capacity of the QI teams and this statistician uh, on NMH QOC data as well as its measurement. We have been able to support the collection of this data. Uh, for example, we introduced the hybrid system with support from partners. We are so grateful to IUSAID. Uh, who helped us adopt one of the systems that they were using in HIV to be able to capture the data that was not being captured in the routine system. Also, we've been able to establish the TRI teams in health facilities to document the various TRI projects. Uh, Uganda has also been able to provide uh, joint support supervision uh, around mentorship training and data collection at uh, subnational levels. We've also proudly been able uh, to rally uh, donors as well as the government partners to support uh, MNHQOC measurement. Um, the next slide talks about some of the work we did, baseline assessment uh, in the learning sites. But what is so pronounced is that most of the facilities were struggling around the areas of quality and utilization of neonatal health services as well as experience of data. Uh, in the next slide, we shall look at um, uh, the evolution of the adoption of the MNHOC indicators in Uganda's health management information system. As you could see in the early 2000s, we could only track two indicators, that is deliveries as well as maternal day. But as time progressed on with the subsequent HMIS reviews, we are able to introduce uh, more, more um, quality indicators around MN, MNH. We can move on. Uh, this slide uh, tries to summarize uh, the journey uh, from the previous slide uh, around the different uh, focus areas of NMH. And in summary, you see that uh, our health information system is able to capture 11 out of the 15 core indicators, uh, which is uh, good for the country. Uh, and in, you realize that uh, where we are currently struggling relates to uh, sanitation as well as experience of care. So that is the area where we need to improve more to ensure that we are able to capture this in care. We can move on to the next slide. Uh, the next set of slides talks about performance, how uh, the learning sites are doing. We cited a few indicators, and this specific slide speaks to two indicators, the institutional birth, as well as the life birth rates. Uh, the quick takeaway point we see here is that um, there has been an increase in the birth uh, across all uh, the learning sites all through the time. But also, it is very important to note that there are, is an increasing trend in the life birth rates for all sites over time. So for this period where we see a sharp dive in one of the facilities, something that is uh, attributed to documentation challenge, that are quality issue. Also, when we look at the next slide, it talks about um, performance, the area of maternal death, overall maternal death in the learning districts. Uh, a bit reducing uh, in most of them, save for one that is Kasese, where we had a sharp increase uh, in 2021. But overall, in our learning size, uh, these maternal deaths have been able to reduce significantly. Then in the next set of slides, uh, we shall look at Uganda's um, examples around the QI projects that have been implemented in the different learning sites. Uh, this slide speaks to one of the great innovations that really reduced neonatal death uh, in one of the facilities. Uh, how it was introduced, it, be, uh, it started with uh, problem identification, then there was some kind of uh, planning, right? and then uh, implementation, then there was monitoring, as well as uh, evaluation at the end of this project. So significant uh, about this project was that there was a reduction in neonatal death due to hypersemia by 90%. This was really a great milestone for this uh, facility. Also, another slide speaks to hypothermia management among the units. Uh, this is one of the hospitals in the central region of Uganda. We see two aspects here, screening, early screening, 
and also initiation to oxygen. So over time, we note that um, screening kept on improving uh, and also initi uh, initiation of patients uh, of uh, hypoxemia to oxygen kept on increasing all through save for the last period where we had some documentation challenge due to a knowledge gap. Now we can move on to another slide. Uh -huh. In this slide, I want to share Uganda's experience and uh, lessons learned uh, through the process of implementation of MNH2OC. First of all, uh, there has been great and technical guidance as well as strategic partnerships uh, that have been very instrumental in strengthening QOC measurement. We are so grateful to WHO uh, Uganda and WHO Afro for the technical support around this area. Also, uh, we've realized that having MNH or C district focal points, the ADHOs, MCH by statisticians has really contributed to better outcomes. Uh, also uh, uh, to note is that um, there are more efforts needed to share evidence-based learning within and across facilities. This is uh, one area that we really needed to, to, to pay keen interest on. And also realize that the required statisticians have been very instrumental in data collection and reporting, especially at that point when we did not have uh, a system that could comprehensively capture all the indicators. Uh, some of the challenges, uh, there is insufficient data quality to monitor MNH2OC, as you may have seen in one of the slides. Uh, also, the human resource for health is still a documented challenge, both in terms of quality and quantity. There is also exist uh, knowledge and skills gap, in particular on data analysis and trade documentation. This has really hindered the uh, uh, greater envisioning of better results. Uh, also, there is inadequate resources to support the QOC measurement, both at national and subnational levels. Still in Uganda, we happen to have multiple data systems, some of which are not sustainable and others are not interoperable. So what are some of our quick immediate uh, priorities? Uh, one, uh, we're looking at advocating for more resources to strengthen QOC measurement. Also, we're looking at integration of the remaining essential indicators into our routine system. As you may have seen, we have a gap somewhere. Also, we are trying as much as possible to ensure that we enhance DHS2 to improve its functionality as a way of providing more access to data, as well as promoting usage of this data. We're looking towards streamlining the various electronic medical records in country. And also we want to partner with academic institutions as well as professional bodies uh, for critical research on the essential MNH indicators, especially those that we are currently not capturing. Also, uh, we want to prioritize the harmonization of the various MNH OC assessment tools to have them integrated in the electronic database to help us have uh, a single tool that could measure uh, performance and also enable us to compare results across the different uh, regions as well as districts. Also, we are looking at uh, building the capacity of the health and district staff uh, around data quality analysis as well as joint documentation. I want to thank you for listening. A big thank you to all presenters and uh, for this for a really exciting presentation. We are now will now turn it over to the next last part of the of this webinar, which is question and answers. So thank you so much once again to presenters, all the presenters that have presented today, Matron Margaret, Gertrude, and also uh, Kamara and and Ibrahim. So we have received a number of questions. Uh, the first question is. Uh, does the dashboard indicators for quality of care? How is the process indicators captured? So who would like, uh, this question is to Ibrahim or uh, Biniam.
Hello, who'd like to? Ibrahim? Obinium, yeah. would you like to take us through the answer this question, uh, which is, does the dashboard capture data on process as well as outcome indicators for quality of care? How are the process indicators captured? So yes, um, Diane, let me start because Ibrahim is having challenges in, in actually accessing, but he can come in. So yes, the, the dashboard actually uh, captures process indicators, although the dashboard is located within the, the national HMIS system. And uh, we have identified um, uh, process indicators that we are capturing also in terms of delivery rates, active management of third stage. We have issues around the, the mortality or case fatality rates of uh, certain conditions. So um, the person that is asking, are there process indicators for QOC on the dashboard? Yes, we have actually uh, process indicators. So um, the dashboard actually is a management tool that uh, is capturing those data. So we pay more attention on, on, on um, the, 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 the process indicators that we have adapted at country level. All right. Um, may I add to that, Margaret Mana? Yes, okay, please go thank ahead. you very much. Yeah, yes. So, in addition to what um, Ms. Romana said, you know, in the presentation that um, Dr. Biam made, he mentioned the DHISO dashboard as well as the RMSH um, scorecard dashboard. So, for the DHISO dashboard, what we show actually are outcomes indicator. So, for the process indicator now, those are what we uh, show through the RMSH scorecard dashboard. And we have an option for us to actually Ibrahim, we are losing you. We are losing you. So maybe. Okay, so I. We have lost oh, Ibrahim. Sorry, sorry. Diana, can you hear yes. me? Now we can hear you. Okay, so I think uh, in the interest of time, we'll just, we'll move to the next question, which is, uh, could the presenters comment on how they assess the validity of the data? So this question goes to both, uh, both presenters. Ibrahim, Rogers, please feel free, Biniam or Matron Margaret to come in. Um, for case of Uganda, first of all, we've ensured that um, DHIS2, where this data is entered, uh, is accessible at all levels. The only challenge is that not every facility is able to uh, input this data because of infrastructure challenges. But uh, what we've done is uh, we've gone ahead to add in what we call the validation rules to be able to flag those uh, outliers that could have been entered mistakenly in the system. And then the responsible officers are able to respond. Uh, just like the outlier you saw flagged, this was already flagged, only that uh, the responsible officer was um, a bit slow to respond to this uh, issue. Thank you. Thank you, Rogers. Um, Margaret Mana, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, this has been, uh, sorry, we are using from the same laptop. Uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, I mean, uh, I think quality is, uh, quality of data is a problem across the board. Uh, and ensuring validity of data is, is an exercise that we always employ. Uh, our, our strategy is, you know, uh, 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 you know, creating a culture of, you know, data use where people use data, they start you know, uh, questioning you know, uh, quality of their data. So they start to rectify you know, uh, all the bottlenecks and challenges surrounding you know, uh, data entry uh, or collections. 
uh, and uh, also take actions. So uh, it is it is a problem uh, which uh, uh, which we are cognizant, uh, but we are also working around improving you know uh, data quality uh, to improve you know uh, to make sure uh, we have the right data and make the right decision uh, from the data that's coming. Over to you, Diana. Thank you, thank you, Binyam. Uh, thank you, Rogers, for for, this, uh, for that feedback. So the next question that uh, uh, will go to still the team from Sierra Leone uh, regarding the low reporting rates from hospitals. Uh, whether they whether actually can you verify whether there are low reporting rates from hospitals and whether or not it's difficult to get accurate data from hospitals. Uh, <clears throat> I think Ibrahim uh, is not able to uh, access, maybe his internet is not strong. So uh, I, I can come in for Ibrahim. Uh, yes, uh, hospitals report, they are also part of the DHIS2. Uh, and they have also you know, uh, a structure where uh, we have manpower to collect data as well as you know, uh, enter the data into the DHIS2 system. And they have also an ND, a MND officer who, who is responsible for analysis and reporting. Yes, there is a challenge uh, uh, in terms of reporting, particularly from the private facilities. Uh, and also in some situation, you know, some of our MND officers are volunteers. Uh, they are not on payroll. Uh, we have some challenges around that. But uh, to some extent, uh, at least around 40, 50% uh, of hospitals report on, uh, on DHIS2. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Over to you, Diana. Okay, thank you so much, Biniam. Uh, so the next question I'm going to uh, pose is whether it's whether the the challenges with DHIS to capturing mortality by cause have been overcome in Sierra Leone. Uh, yes, uh, again, uh, <clears throat> you see we have both of us, uh, some process indicator. For instance, you know the active management stage of labor, the labor rate. We have also outcome indicator that includes, you know, maternal mortality and the stillbirth. Uh, for instance, maternal mortality, we monitor by cause. We also monitor by case fatality. We also monitor by district in terms of maternal mortality ratio. So it is captured on the dashboard. We have also in, uh, in the, I mean, the dashboard is coming from, you know, the HMI. So it's captured and monitored uh, through this uh, process. Even we have it also in the scorecard. So maternal mortality is looked at in both management tool. Over to you, Dan. Okay, thank you, Biniam. And then uh, this question, I think I'll pose this to uh, Rogers Kajimu. How politicians respond to poor data results? Um, for us, uh, thank you, Diane. For You're us, welcome. actually, yes. For us, actually, in Sierra Leone, um, you know, the question they ask about uh, how do politicians react? Because we know, although uh, data is a, it's, it's, it's highly sensitive in terms of political whatever, um, because of the data that we have been showing, it has made the Honorable Minister of Health and Sanitation in Sierra Leone to declare maternal land child mortality as a public health emergency because uh, the QOC data dashboard that we have been showing has not been very good. So they have declared that one and everybody is trying to invest in that light. And uh, actually the data, the MPDSR data that uh, somebody asked a question has helped in developing um, the, the quality of care program itself in Sierra Leone, as well as the national uh, QI initiative in the making quality of care as a national priority and also has helped in developing QI initiative in health facilities as well as our change package, the quality of care change packages that we have developed. So basically um, that's the experience I will share from Sierra Leone. Thank you, Matron Margaret. Another question is uh, re relates to uh, the, the role of the private facilities in reporting. Could you please uh, elaborate uh, what their role is, whether they, they're actually being engaged in data reporting? 
in some contexts, most private uh, facilities are captured under the health service streets and makes them, uh, they're not necessarily linked to, to the national system in terms of reporting. So maybe, uh, you know, we could hear from either Rogers or uh, the team from Sierra Leone on what the experience is uh, with regards to um, private facilities reporting on MNH quality of care. Uh, thank you, Diana. Uh, you can experience with the uh, private sector has not been that all very good. Uh, private sector reporting, honestly, is still very low. However, uh, when it comes to um, MNH uh, uh, indicators, uh, most of the facilities are able to report. I would say that uh, about 25 to 30% of private sector are able to do reporting around uh, MNH uh, indicators. And yet, if you compare that to other programs, it's about 5%. So private sector reporting is still a challenge, but we are trying as much as possible to ensure that we bring them on board. Thank you. So um, for Sierra Leone, actually, I think uh, we are all having the same challenges in terms of uh, private facilities reporting. But uh, for us in Sierra Leone, what we have been doing through the public-private engagement is to actually get them to understand the reasons beyond it and uh, for them to really see, because most often people assume because it's a private facility, their services are, are better as compared to the public facilities. So we are trying to really lobby and engage them to be able to align their reporting system with the national. However, at a district level, through the district health management teams, we have been able to get some of them to report, although we want to improve on that moving forward. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Margaret and Rogers Kajimu for, the, for those uh, insightful answers. So in the interest of time, I believe really coming to the end of the webinar. So I would like to thank our esteemed presenters once again for excellent delivery and, and answering those questions uh, effectively. I would like to thank you all for joining this webinar and for, for all the questions raised. Uh, so for the questions that we're not able to answer, we will uh, take them offline and uh, we shall share the copy of the presentation of, of the, uh, from this webinar and the recording, as well as the answers to the Q&A in the coming days uh, via the Quality of Care Network website. And we shall also uh, communicate, to, with, to, we shall communicate the dates of the next uh, webinar, which is part of the webinar series on strengthening MNH quality of care. So thank you once again, colleagues, and uh, I wish you a wonderful uh, day, evening, wherever you are. Thank you. Thank you, Diana, and everyone. Thank Bye. you. Thank you, Diana. Thank you, colleagues, for the presentation. You're welcome.